that we have some guests available today, and we're glad to have you as always. Um, at the last quorum court, um, Mr. Prude had asked to be on the agenda, and he had not been through a committee to be put on the agenda, so that's the purpose of the meeting today, is for him to speak to a committee, and uh, we will hear him, hear what he has to say, and uh, we will go from there. So, Mr. Prude, if you are ready to speak, we have, I think, four form court members here. Six counting yourself. Six counting myself. So, we got a sizable form court representation. So, if you go ahead and uh, address this committee and then We'll go from there. Okay. Um, well, some of y'all know my name is Dennis Prude, and um, I've been in Blava Building pretty much my whole life. Um, I come through Blava High, have children come through Blava High, got children still in Blava school system. Uh, we're going through with Senator Wallace on certain issues concerning the county. I have friends and family that's in legislative Little Rock throughout the state. I'm friends with a lot of mayors this in Mississippi County and throughout the state. Um, so I have a lot of relationships that um, that I that I tag into pretty much on a daily basis, and I want to thank who all, Judge Nelson, and everybody for allowing me to come speak. And I'm just coming to speak on the concern of the citizens of Mississippi County and uh, mostly uh, uh, Balabo, but concerning everybody in Mississippi County mostly. And one of the um, want me to go on now, y'all? Okay. But one of the main concerns is that. Um, uh, there is this um, misnomer about Blava, Mississippi County that's spread out all throughout um, when it comes to, I know I heard the meetings and everybody talk about jobs and opportunities and, and um, uh, economic development and, and economic development tax and all of that. Well, a lot of citizens are concerned that they feel like that the um, um, Blava's being ignored um, and, and Blava pretty much pays a buck of all the taxes that goes on in Mississippi County. And they felt like Blava was being ignored. And it, it appears that there is a strategic plan to sabotage Blava for some reason. Because paint, paint Blava is the worst place in the world. I think everybody else feel like their place is better than Blava, which is not true. And so, and a lot of people want to have, give Blava opportunity. Uh, a lot of people want to invest in Blava. But a lot of these people have bad taste in their mouth. Um, we all know that Jonesboro is an economic machine over there. Um, Craighead County they just got recognized for the third largest fast growing county in the state of Arkansas. And uh, the unemployment rate is under 3%. Um, Northwest Arkansas is under 3%. We had probably right at 10%, I think, somewhere for up and down, give, give or take. Um, so, and, and we hear this thing about the workforce. And, and so the people are concerned that it's not training and I think what ANC doing and Doc Shinwell and she would I think all the training that helping people get ready is a good thing and I am a fan of ANC uh, but that's not the problem the problem is opportunity they're not getting the calls they're going through the program but they're not getting called so a lot of people are just not getting the calls now <clears throat> you, you know this stuff about drugs and stuff well that's on both sides you have Caucasian and African American people can't, can't, can't pass the drug test that's everywhere across the United States. But the biggest thing is, people feel like they're not getting an opportunity. And if you if you stand by Save a Lot, right here um, on the west side of town, between 12 and 3, you'll see a parade of cars going to Jonesboro from Blau. Because they couldn't get an opportunity here. People just want to take care of their families. Everybody's not wanting to go to Big River. Everybody's not wanting to go to Nucor. What is the alternative? Everybody don't want to be in the steel industry. Some people say, I don't want 12-hour shifts. I just give me an 8-hour shift. But they're not getting opportunities. And it's this misnomer out there that, you know, we don't have a workforce. Well, I think that's not accurately true. Because there's no way we can be at almost 10% unemployment. And then you're saying we don't have the workforce. Now, if you bring a company here that's going to hire 600 people, which all of y'all know, all 600 are not going to be from Blava anyway. They're going to pull from different places from all around. So like ANC don't have just a bunch of Blava people. they got to be from everywhere. But the problem is, people feel like they're being left out. And, and, I, and I've mentioned it to some of you all, 
then I and 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 um, you know we give all this tax money, we're giving all these incentives to all these companies, and they're basically ignoring us and not even following through with some of the things they say they're going to do. We're constantly giving money for this, constantly giving money, and they basically is just saying taking our money and ignoring us, not hiring locally. Now, you can't make these folks hire locally, but case in point, Big River Steel. Big River Steel was was grounded on if you if you wouldn't work. If you're past the drug test, we're gonna give you an opportunity, Big River. Right at them courthouse over there. John Carina, God rest his soul, he's one of the main ones pushing this. That was the promise. Well, that promise is not being fulfilled. Because when you check the numbers, most of the people out there don't even live in this county. All the managers out there come from up north. They move into Outer Branch, Mississippi, and South Haven, Mississippi. Three of them stay in Jonesboro, Arkansas. They're not even giving Mississippi County a, a, a look. But we started going out here giving all this money, talking about economic this and all, and we're not we're being laughed at. Everybody see it. And they're saying Blabber is not the problem, it's some of the people in Blabber is the problem. Because some people don't want to say what is need to be said because they tied to certain people, they tied to certain families, and they see what's going on. But you can't say you from Mississippi County and say you for Mississippi County and ignoring the situation. Because your silence is make that makes you complicit in what's going on. So all I'm saying is that we just need to be smart. Smart about what we're doing, moving forward about what's going on. We need, you know, I think Mr. Chewwood is doing a, 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 a okay job as far as, as, as economic development. I have nothing against him, person, nothing. I'm just talking about Mississippi County at whole, that what the people are saying, <clears throat> this is not true. We want an opportunity, we're not giving an opportunity. Now, because of short notice, and, and I thank Ms. Senator for calling me, that I was going to bring a list of people that have came through work program at ANC. They just haven't got much of the phone call. But these people are moving away. They're leaving our community because they don't want, they say, I don't have opportunity. But Jonesville is giving them opportunity. And so we can't sit back and say, well, we're doing this and doing this. Well, we don't have the work, this, whatever. Well, show me that. Show me where, where Big River hired 40, 50 people from Blob, Arkansas, from Mississippi County, and they failed a drug test. And it was from here. Where, where are those stats at? Show me that. Because just saying it, I mean, would you, I mean, it, say, it sounds good because it, 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 it allows you to continue to talk about things that really don't have any clue about what's going on. So I'm just talking on concern to the county judges and the, and the corn court that we just need to be smarter. I know Mississippi County is made up more than just Blava. But all I'm saying is that the people are saying Blava need to be priority. And, of course, I grew here. So I know the history. I know what is what. I know who is who. I know what's been happening in the past. I know all the political mess that happened and all the bad decisions that have been made in Blah Blah Arkansas, Mississippi County. I'm not here to discuss that. I'm talking about how we can move forward, how we can produce and make Mississippi County better with the help. we got a new judge. Case in point, I, when, before Mr. Uh, judge Nelson became a um, judge, I brought an investor to his office. I want to invest $15 million in Blah Blah Arkansas. Did I not, Mr. Judge? And he represents two organizations that invest fifty million dollars a year. They sit back and everywhere they go. And I brought these folks in and rode around, and they was talking about what they're gonna do here. They was gonna invest fifteen million for the first phase. They was gonna invest another fifteen million. They had all this bad talk about Blah. They were skipping all over Blah going to Perigo. Everybody skipping us going to Perigo and everywhere else because a lot of them are just people. We have nobody in place to say that's not true about Blah. That's that ain't happening, Blah. That's not true. Nobody's in our place. We don't have, Blava has no, we don't have no lobbyists. We don't have nobody fighting for us in Little Rock. We don't have nobody in the room for Mississippi County. We finally have a senator, a Senator Wallace, who is, who is willing to do whatever it takes to have Mississippi County. Regardless of you're Democrat, Republican, with black, white, green, or purple, he's, he's, he's open. But if, he, if you don't bring anything to him to say this is what we need in Mississippi County, he, I mean, he's not knowing what's going on. So we got... Unfortunately, our politics has failed us in Mississippi County, but that's neither here nor there. So, but we got a new judge now. We got other people, new people in place, and we just have to do something differently because we've been doing the same thing over and over, and y'all know the definition of doing the same thing over and over. Y'all know what that means. That's insanity. And so all, all I'm saying to all of you all is that I'm just here to help whatever way I can do it. I got the developers and people that want to come in this town and, do, and give Blava a chance in spite of what they've been told. But if no one is here to say, that's not true, Mr. Judge Nelson is approachable, he's not like that, or Mr. Chibwood is available, 
that, that if that's wrong about Mr. Cheetah. If we don't have people in place to say that's not true, they're going to believe it. And these people are saying, we're going to give Blob a chance. I was in Jonesboro last week. Had a meeting with some guys talking about investing. Well, first thing I did, I said, well, how about Blob Arkansas? They all ride back. Oh, Blob Arkansas. Well, well, well. They start ranting. That's not true. Well, we was told that's not true. Well, I talked to somebody that's not true. But nobody was there. So now these people are saying, we consider Blob. Who we need to talk to? I said, talk to Judge Nelson. He's our new judge. Okay. Well, talk to Mr. Chipwood. I gave Mr. Chipwood a number because I, I have his number. Okay. I said, these are people you need to talk to about doing anything in Mississippi County. And they're open to it. And I'm going to give you these people's names and let you talk to who these people are and see who these people are. But all I'm, all I'm trying to explain to everybody is that I'm not trying to cast any spurs on anybody. I'm just trying to say how we move forward. And, and, and one thing, and one person can't do it. I mean, Ms. Chibwood only can do so much. Dr. Chibwood at ANC only can do so much. We need a team put together, an economic development task force put together for Mississippi County, made up of whoever y'all want to make up, the people that's going to, the everyday job is to go out and figure out what is needed in Blava, Arkansas, what is needed in Mississippi County. Because what the need of Blava might not be the need of Manila, might not be the need of OCO, but the need is there. So we need to address those needs, but not totally ignore Blava, Arkansas. And I think if some people willing to say, I've talked to some, say, I'm willing to be on it, and they, they not ask for no money. They just, these, some of these people used to live here, but moved away and made all kind of money and said, man, I just hate to see my, my, my hometown go down like it's going. What can I do to help? I got some friends, man, that's willing to invest. What, who I need to talk to? So I, I, I want to put these people in the room with Mr. Nelson and Mr. Bill Nelson and all the quote unquote members and, and, and the people that's open to new ideas and, um, and, a, and a new blobber. Because we really need to be talking about a new blobber and a new direction. Because the, the, the way things been going, if, if anybody can look around right now in Mississippi County and blob especially and think that we are looking good, then you, 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 you're being disingenuous because that's, that's not totally accurate. And so people just saying get them opportunity and, 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 and they're willing to work. But we got a lady, uh, Linda Moore, Dawson Well. <clears throat> well, uh, the last conversation I had with her, she said that some of these come on and give her a contract. She said, I picked the people up and take them to work, then, but they won't in contract with me. So, I mean, Economic development is more than jobs. It need to be a quality of life also. We need to talk about the quality of life, what's going on in Blob and Arkansas and Mississippi County. But I'm just telling you of some of them. And, I, and like I said, I don't want to take up much time, but if anybody got any questions, I answer. But that's kind of my plight of, of the, what's going on right now. And I'm just saying we just need to do better and, and head in a better direction. And, 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 um, and, um, and like I said, we had, we, you know, you hear, hear all the horror stories. Uh, um, like for one, um, the company that went to Forest City. Now, you know, I talked to Forest City officials and everything. I think it's called Ru Yi, R U I Y. Well, that's the first China company to come in the state of Arkansas. And from what I was told, we weren't even, we pretty much weren't even in the ball game for, for the talks. Now, Ms. Chiu might get player on that, but from what I was told from Forest City people, they came down to OCO, the Forest, and uh, West Memphis, and Forest City. Now, last I checked, they hired me 600 people at $20 an hour. That could have been paramount for somebody to play like Blau. And they're using 300 to 500,000 tons of cotton a year. Now, last I knew, Mississippi County was a cotton county. And I'm saying is that, and they, they make it yarn to make clothing to send back to China to make clothes. So, now, they got to go outside of Forest City and get a lot of this cotton because Forest City cannot uh, supply them because they don't have that many farmers up there like we do over in this area. That's just one incident. Well, I talked to the mayor, and of course the new mayor of Forest City, talked to the chamber over there and talked to the economic people and everything, and found out what's really going on with that situation. And of course, unfortunately right now they're on hold because of the tariffs and stuff with Donald Trump and all that, with the China stuff fighting, but they're on, they're on pace to start in about a year. And so $20 an hour at 600 people, I mean, um, and so I was asking so many questions, they thought I was trying to steal them, steal a company from Forest City. And I said, no, I don't want to try to take them. But, you in Forest City, how about a second location in Blob, Arkansas, Mississippi County? We ought to be down there saying, okay, y'all can be out here, but let's give us a chance. Put a center package together for that. And this other situation that has came along 
to where because we can't just concentrate on steel, steel, steel because a lot of women ain't gonna work in the steel industry. We need to get more women and men friendly jobs in this county because that's what they're going over there in, Jones, in Jonesboro. Boy, women from Unilever, Nestle, all these stuff, they're paying $20 an hour over there. You can afford to drive an hour there, there and back. The average salary in Jonesboro is right at $50,000. That's the average salary. Now, Jonesboro, you know, they have no problem with, with some of the workforce over there because a lot of people over there working, so they got to reach outside. But a lot of people feel like that we're speaking, you know, about workforce, and it's a lot of people that um, um, is not getting opportunity. One name in particular, a young man named Solomon Slaughter. Went through the work program, come out the Navy, 4.0 grade point average from, from ANC, did well. Did everything they asked him to do and did so. Not as much as a phone call. But he was told if he go through their program, he gonna get a job. Now, everybody get a job is not going to ANC. It's not going through their program. Some wanna come right out of high school and go to work. Because they gotta take care of their mama, they gotta take care of their brother. They can't they're not they're not interested in college. So we ought to have those gaps and fill those gaps. Whoever wanna go to ANC, whoever wanna go straight out of high school, whoever wanna do whatever, we need to have fill those gaps, figure out why how can we help these people. And if you're on drugs, they're not even telling these kids where you can go to get rehab. But this way you can go to get off of weed. They're not even doing that. Well, you just fell a drug test, gone about your business. Some of them saying, I need help, but I don't, nobody, nobody's helping me. But they got rehabs over there in Jonesboro. They got places where they send you to help you. So if any place we need to mimic right now is Craighead County and Jonesboro, and they are willing to help. They are truly willing to help. I don't know if y'all know a guy with the name Bill Vance. He used to be from Blava. He said he was an old Blava native guy. He lived in Jonesboro. Last I talked, I think he's still living. And he talked about Blava and remember Blava. I think he used to have barbecue stands some back in the day. Mr. Dutch, you might remember his name. His Vance, last name Vance. Bill Vance, I think his name. But he, him and Mayor Parent, all of them, all those guys I talked to pretty much every other week about how to help Mississippi County and Blava. We need a youth center. We need a lot of other things we need, but we're not putting the priority where it needs to be. <coughs> We just need, and all I'm saying is that with Nelson and everybody here in Chippewood, put together an economic development task force of certain people. And let that task force be, be the task force that every day we got people in Little Rock, we got, we got, we have nobody in Little Rock fighting for us. Nobody. Nobody down there speaking up for Mississippi County. Nobody down there saying, hey, Mississippi County need this. Nobody down there doing that. Osceola have it. And Jonesboro have it. Other people got it. We don't have nobody lobbying for us. You know, they, 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 they say about, you know, they say about Dickie Kittimo this and Joe Harris Jr. But one thing you, you can't deny, they for Osceola. And I, you can't blame them. So when they say they for Osceola, they should be. We should have people for Blau, Arkansas. And we don't, I mean, people feel like we don't have people representing us in Blau when we pay the bulk of pretty much all the taxes that come in. And so that's one of the things I kind of want to expound on a little bit about and that we just need to do things differently. Judge and 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 um, um and uh, because you know some of this stuff is, is not true about Blava and we have nobody to combat that when it comes to people that want to invest millions of dollars in our in our community and and I will share with you some more people that's willing to come in here and say hey I'm willing to put some meat online what you know how can I what what needs what I need to do you know and these people are coming from Jonesboro and and up uh, Fayetteville get some want to invest. Uh, if five, six stores called Five Below, y'all ever heard of them stores? Six stores called Five Below just opened up in the state of Arkansas. We weren't even, we weren't even considered. And it's, it's a spinoff of the, the dirt cheap. Five Below, everything in the five dollars and under. We weren't even considered. But they're in Jonesboro, they're in Conway, they're in other places. I said, well, why would y'all consider us? Who was asking? Nobody was asking on y'all behalf. So I'm just saying we need to just do things a little differently and put people in the right place and not and remove a lot of the politics out of things and have people that can go down and efficiently be about Mississippi County and about bringing jobs and about giving people opportunity because I think that we're not truly giving folks the opportunity that needs the opportunity, Mr. Nelson, because that's the only thing that's going to combat a lot of this crime. You can talk about crime all day long, but if you're not giving these folks a job, they're going to find a way. These folks hungry. A lot of them know they can't eat steaks and potatoes like some everybody. Some people are here forced to do every day. They just saying, "I just want to eat." But you can't you can't ignore a certain portion of the community, 
And a lot of the African American community feel like they're the ones being ignored. And the last I checked, blah was getting browner, that's not getting uh, whiter. So we have to um, address the community at whole and not be, well, we got a workforce problem, but we picking and choosing who get the jobs. Because I have kids that play baseball out there, and I'm out there pretty much two or three times a week. And I talk to some everybody out there from Big River, and a lot of people, not, they're not going to say some things because they work out there and all that. And all I'm saying is, and Newcore represent, I talk to some of them, and they're willing to do a lot. Newcore's willing to do more. Big River's willing to do more. A lot of Tenere's willing to do more. But we have to put stuff together and get an organization or a task force together that they trust, know that, okay, well, they, what y'all say y'all going to do is going to what y'all say y'all going to do. And I think that we got a pipeline every day coming out of Blava High, graduating class every year, 50 to 60, if not more, young men ready to go to work. If you apply yourself and go in and talk to them and show them that, hey, okay, having a job, you can have a nice house, you can have a nice car. You can, you can do this. Talk to them about a 401k. Talk about them. Explain. We don't have that. We have some people doing some good things. I think, um, um, you know, some people that's talking to some of these young folks doing some good things, but nobody's addressing the young folks. They're coming out of high school. So if nobody's telling them how to do better, they're going to continue to do what they've been doing. And the only success they see is the drug dealer in the street. So what they're going to gravitate to. And your person is hungry, he's going to eat one way or the other. Whether you're going to pull that pistol and go up in the store or in your house or while you get in your car, it's one way it's going to happen. So that's a good way that, and the young people are just saying, just give them opportunity. That's all they're asking for. You know, and it, it, it not where, and it's some people that work, some, work from Blava, Ranella, they all work at some of these factories, and they say, man, I would just love to go to work one day and look down my line and see some folks from Mississippi County. I see a number of people from everywhere but Mississippi County. And, and, and I don't know if some people just scared to talk to Dave Stickler or, 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 or Nucor or whatever. And I know because of politics stuff, people don't want to say what's going on. But like I told Senator Wallace last night, I don't know, I don't know what the politicians are scared of because that ain't your voting base. 80% of people work out there don't live here. So they can't vote against you. So I don't know why you're scared to even speak up for them. Because they can't hurt you. They don't live here. But the thing is, you're getting our tax incentive money. You're getting our economic money. And you basically ignoring it, basically. And one thing I saw at the last meeting, and I would like Ms. Chibwood to explain this to me too, because you know, a lot of people ask this question, that um, um, in your report, you um, $12,000 on Atlas. Now, Atlas closed twice. Now, Atlas is, is, is hopefully it'll survive, but it's been closed twice. But what I like to know, and it's a lot of other people like to know, is that why are we offering $6,000 to Duncan County, Pimscott County? outside our, our county, sick down off of people. I mean, we ought to take that money and put it toward Mississippi County. We offer money outside to another state. I don't understand that. I mean, hopefully somebody can explain that to me. Why are we offering $6,000 incentive to Duncan County, Pimscott County, and Southeast Missouri? Because last I checked, Missouri not offering us anything. Craig County not offering Mississippi. So whenever you get chance, I'd like to know why we offering sick dollar And from what I was told, we've been doing it for about three or four years now. So I'm just saying we need to be smart about what's going on, where we're putting our money. We need to be smart about what's going on because what we've been doing, it's not been working. And, 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 and I know some people that wouldn't offer their service for free, Mr. Nelson, to say, I want to help this county, I want to help. And they just don't want to run into the political mess and the political mess, basically. And it should be about Democrat, Republican, and all that old stuff. That stuff don't matter. It's about Mississippi County. And, and who else from Mississippi County I don't care what color you are, what party you represent. If you're from Mississippi County, I'm with you. I'm not a fan of Donald Trump. Didn't vote for him. But if Donald Trump had a plan to help Mississippi County, I'd be the first one in his, in his room saying, let's do it. I ain't going to be like, well, he Republican and he done. I, that's, 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 that's asinine to act like that. Because when it's all said and done, you know, you have to have friends on both sides. And so, and I think a lot of that has gotten in the way of our um, process here in Mississippi County. And some people do feel, and, and maybe Ms. Chibwood can clear this up too, some people do feel, Ms. Chibwood, that you're more about O'Sullivan than Blah Arkansas. They do feel like They feel like everything goes to O'Sullivan. And, and up until last year, from what I was told, that basically you reported to Dickie Kinemo, that's it. Now, all I'm saying, I don't know if that's true or not, but all I know is that, that 
you represent Mississippi County and what's good for Osceola and what's good for Blava, we all for that. But we, we, we got people that's representing Mississippi County and everybody living in Osceola. Well, you know, I mean, with all due, Lenora living in Osceola. Dr. Shinwell living in Osceola. Shinwell, Shinwell living in Osceola. Lisa John Adams, she live in Garson, I think, but her husband is from Osceola. I mean, so we got a lot of people on this economy. Where the Blava people at? What, what, where that say at? So Nor Lenora's not going to say anything against Big River. Lisa John ain't going to say anything against Newport. Where's the neutralization that says, hey, um, this is what's best for Blava? I don't care about. No, I didn't vote for Sanders, but I, but I think this is a this is a this to help Blavo. No, I didn't support so and so, but this to help Blavo. We got the quality of life has to be addressed <clears> in Blavo, <throat> Arkansas, and I think that if the right people come together, Blavo and Mississippi County can change overnight. It won't take 10, 15, 20 years, and we have to make decisions not just for now. We need to make decisions for now, and when all of us are long gone and dead, and stay to these. Five and short term decisions we're making. We need to make decisions for now and when we're gone. That's happening everywhere else. Mayor Perrin and all these people, they're willing to help. I introduced Mayor Perrin to Mayor Sanders right there. He'll tell you right there. I introduced him to him. I brought Mayor Perrin here. Bankers, state representatives from Jonesboro, right here in Blava, to help us with a youth center. They came right to EOC. Where did it go? They came in and said they're going to do a fundraiser to help Blava, Arkansas. If you get a chance, look on the City Youth Ministries in Jonesboro. It's a wonderful program. They do well. 98% of the kids at that, at that youth center is African American. 98% of all the, the support and the, the help comes from Caucasian people. They got the policemen involved. They got the mayor involved. They got docs involved. Everybody's involved. Help it. Because they're saying, you matter. And that's, that was the organization. But it went away, Mr. Nelson, because politics got in the way. And they still willing to help with that. So I'm just saying, there's people willing to help. Even though people have moved, they still got their heart shit in blah, but they want to see better. They want to do better. And so my position is, let's move forward and, and put the right people in place. Let's work together. I ain't got to like you to work with you. If you're about Mississippi County and you're about helping, I'm all for it. We go to the meeting. When the meeting's over with, you go your way, I go mine. I ain't, got to, I ain't have to vote for you to work with you if you live in Mississippi County. And that's some of the stuff that's hindered us here in Mississippi County. It's this bipartisan stuff that's going on and Democrat and Republican, who vote for who, who didn't work for who. And everybody know it. Everybody knows it. They laughing at us, Mississippi County. We can do a whole lot better, Judge. And all I'm saying is that let's, let's work together for the betterment of Mississippi County. And we really can change things. Because if we're not going to give some of these people opportunity and unify this city, then, you know, it's not going to happen. Because people don't want to be a part of communities like that. They don't want to be part of no racist stuff. They don't, they don't want to be part of no division. All that stuff is that has really tagged Blau as a bad place. When I said no, it's not like that. In which we know all that stuff is everywhere. But we have to say, no, we are you, we are, we are family over here. I, I, you know, I don't have to be this color or, or represent this party to want to help Mississippi County. I'm saying, let's put the right people in the room with the money, and saying give Blau a chance. And I, like I said, Mr. Judge, um, if some of these people, I'm going to make sure that you talk to them, like I did to, on the other guy, he's willing to come back. And and um, 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 and like I said, he was willing to invest 12 to 15 million. But it was 50 million out of package, Mr. Nell. I, I mean, Judge Nelson right there, he'll tell you, I brought him in from Jonesboro. He said, I, I, this is what I want to do. And the judge at the time told us, well, I'm not judge yet, but if I become judge, I'll do whatever I can to help you. Well, now they want to come back to the table and say, let's, let's do something, Blavo. I got three businesses I think would be great for Blavo, and, and, uh, and we don't care who they're tied to. And we can't just make developers one or two people in Blavo. Well, we only want to support these developers. Well, Jonesboro got all kinds of developers over there. They got a task force over there. They got developers over there. They got, we don't have grant writers. We don't have nobody writing grants for us. We don't have nobody, I mean, you're talking about this Cold War Museum, we need grant writers, we need people. We qualify. We done had a lot of them studies. I, I got them studies, I'm giving to you, Mr. Judge. I have those studies. I know at the last meeting, Mr. Shib uh, Dr. Uh, Mr. Shibwood was talking about a study with the 90 dollars through the governor. I think we don't need to spend that 90 dollars on I got the studies right here to show y'all that we know already been diagnosed already as a rural community. We already know what's going on. When are we going to start reacting to it? So we can just, you know, spend that money somewhere else. 
and I'll get you those also when you can look that up and see, you know. And under the previous administration, Barack Obama, we got put on the radar. It shows in the documentation. Blava, Arkansas, Mississippi County. That's one of the most qualified grant counties, rural county, and talk about all the things that can help Mississippi County. We didn't even tap into it. So a lot of stuff, Clinton School got a lot of surveys and stuff that it's already been done, you know. So, you know, we just have to put the right people in place. And 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 um and the word I want y'all to understand is opportunity. Some people feel like they're not being given the opportunity. It's not the workforce. Yeah, you're gonna have people mess up. That's that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about giving people opportunity. And there's a lot of young men in this community who say they're not being given the opportunity and they're leaving here and moving here. And as I close, I want to say this. I have, like I said, my uh, three of my oldest kids, you know, went through Blava High. They all were in college, and like I said, one has just become a lawyer, and one is going to get ready to go to med school, and one get ready to do some great things in the beauty industry, and, and probably end up in Hollywood somewhere. And the census was, there was spring break was just out. The census was, they didn't even want to come home. None of the kids want to come home for blah, to blah, because they were seeing their friends get killed left and right, and they said, we just don't want to come home. They went to Dallas, they went to Louisiana, they didn't even want to come home. So you had parents call and say, is your daughter talking about going to Louisiana? Because they don't want to come home. Bunch of our kids, because they're scared to come home. But we saying, get the young folks come back. They saying, uh-uh, ain't nothing there for me. You see? So I'm just saying we just need to come together and, 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 and come up with a plan with Mr. Chitwood. And, 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 uh, and I'm willing to work with Mr. Chitwood. I'm willing to, I, I, you know, I'm not asking nobody to pay me, but I'm willing to work with Mr. Chitwood to help him in whatever way. He's one person. But he needs, he needs some more than that to help, because he don't know everybody. And I know at the time, um, uh, uh, Senator Wallace, you know, he didn't feel welcome by a lot of people because Dave, he beat Dave Barnett. Because a lot of people was fun. They was fun of Dave Barnett. Well, when he lost, then he's the senator, so he might not like it, but that's who we need to work with. He might not be a Democrat, but he's willing to work with us. That's all that matters. He's willing to give Mississippi County a chance. He has the governor's ear right now. Right now, the Republicans got the majority. Right now, it's going on. I don't know how long they're going to hold it, but they got it. So right now, he has the governor's ear. So whatever we pretty much need, and I talked to him last night, and I told him about the meeting. And I went over a lot of stuff before him and asked him, am I wrong or anything? I don't want to say. He said, Are you spot on. And he knows about a lot of this stuff, and he's willing to do whatever he can. And we're working with anybody. I mean, I don't care who you are. You see? I mean, um... I don't have to like you to work with you. So, you know, I just want to, I'm going to agree with Lincoln's floor. Anybody got any questions for me? Um, um, like I said, we just have to. Okay, let's do, it. let's do it another way. <laughs> we have some justices here. Let me give them an opportunity to make a comment or ask you a question. And Justice White, we'll start with you. You don't have to say anything if, if you want to help yourself, and we'll just go down the road. I appreciate Mr. Dennis coming and speaking to us. Appreciate your concerns. You. I think you presented your case well, and uh, and I think we're all willing to work. I really don't have anything to add. Um, it's obvious we got problems. It's obvious Blavel's got problems, but I don't think they're solvable overnight. That's you know. But I do appreciate you coming and presenting your program. I agree with what Michael said. Uh, we don't have anything else to add. Um, I agree. Thank you for certainly giving us a lot of things to think about. I do think we should you know, take it into consideration. I appreciate you coming. Thank you. I agree also. I think you've got a lot of good opportunities to, for us to work with. But is there anything that you would like to say? And then when you finish, if you do, would you let Mr. Um, <laughs> Shimwell speak? Well, yeah, I mean, too, I, I, uh, I think you brought up a lot of things that I don't disagree with. Some I do. I think, you know, I think we are. I think the college's work program is something that the county has poured a lot of resources into. I think the college has uh, given it a lot of effort. 
I don't think in today's labor market it's realistic for anyone to think they're going to come with a high school diploma, mm -hmm. which shows that they're reading and writing at roughly an eighth grade level mm -hmm. and expect to get a job. It's going to take something more, which is why we developed this work program. Mm -hmm. You say they don't have time. It's 72 hours. Who doesn't have 72 hours mm -hmm. to help them get a job? Mm -hmm. I mean, to me, you know, and I, and and all that you read, I mean, maybe everyone in the economic development world is wrong, but I brought a thing, and I won't get into all of it, but mm -hmm. it, everything in the United States is workforce. The unemployment rate in Mississippi County, according to the state of Arkansas, mm -hmm. is 4.8%. Uh, so, I don't know, uh, everyone is looking for, for, for new sources of labor. Mm -hmm. Now, if we have an untapped source of labor mm -hmm. in young African Americans, mm -hmm. we certainly need to bring them on board, and that's what this work program is all about. Yes, sir. I don't know, you may not be aware, but this court voted over a $400,000 incentive that goes just with the person, mm -hmm. not to the company. I mean, if if Joe Adams mm -hmm. goes through the program, mm -hmm. then we'll subsidize him. Whatever company hires him, mm -hmm. we'll pay the first $12,000 of his or her salary. Mm -hmm. You can't get a more direct jobs program like that. Mm -hmm. There hadn't been one like that since the WPA. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's a great program for people who actually want to improve and get and actually get a job. Mm -hmm. uh, the cotton company, we worked that cotton company. We worked that cotton company for six months hard. We offered a huge incentive, mm -hmm. but they had that Sanyo building in Forest City. Mm -hmm. It was a new building. Mm -hmm. All we could counter with was. And this is, there again, this is not because I report to Dickie Kenamore, mm -hmm. but because Fruit of the Loom was the largest building that we had, that's what we had to put up against that Samuel building. Now, when you shared that with me, you said to me about that same program. Yeah. You said, Dennis, they wanted a thousand acres and we would have a thousand acres to give them. That's what you told me. And I said, I don't believe that, Mr. Chief. Well, that you said that you said root that company wanted a thousand acres that, and we didn't have a thousand acres to give them. I think you're mistaken. I don't remember everything. Oh, I got a pretty good memory. But go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, anyway, <laughs> that's what happened with that. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so as to why the court offers a half or forty percent rate to the boot hill, yes. that's if you drive through the 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 sales tax is funded. I mean, the, the economic development is funded by sales tax. Mm -hmm. So if you drive through the parking lot at Walmart, Supercenter, mm -hmm. or Lowe's, or a lot of our retail establishments, mm -hmm. you're going to see a ton of Missouri license plates mm -hmm. in that parking lot. Okay. So they're paying the sales tax. Mm -hmm. And they have traditionally been people who, uh, uh, and the people in the boot hill, I will say this, well, I share the... Uh, well, resentment's not too strong a word mm -hmm. of people who, who come with companies who have taken our incentives and then live, decide to live in Marion or Jonesboro or Dyersburg. Right. The people in the Boot Hill, they did not make a choice. They didn't move in here mm -hmm. and decide to go live in the Boot Hill. Mm -hmm. Their grandfather's grandfather lived in the Boot Hill. Mm -hmm. They've always been up there, mm -hmm. and they've always really been part of the Blavel economy. Right. So that's the justification. Is it correct? Is it something we should continue? That's entirely up to this court. Well, do you think, Mr. Chief, we're in position right now to be concerned about Blue Hill in Missouri right now? Well, we need a priority. Because last I checked, you was, miss, you was Mississippi County Economic Development person, not Southeast Missouri. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying to you is that we need to focus more on home I understand the people in Booty and all that, and they come here and, and shopping, that's fine. Well, a lot of us shop in Jonesboro, too, but Mary Perry may not offer us nothing. <coughs> so, and if the court instructs me to stop that, I'll stop it. I mean, I'm saying you, you offer 12000 at least for, per person on payroll tax incentive, am I correct? Okay, well, you could have said, well, instead of giving six to Missouri, give 18000 per person. 
That's whole lot better than 12. We can do that. I'm just, I mean, I'm just, I'm just throwing things stuff. out there. I, like I, I don't want to. <coughs> listen, I'm just saying how we can do better. I, I, I got a lot of respect and shit with me. Him talk. I'm, I'm not casting any aspersion on him. I'm just saying how we can do better to move forward because this is some of the, the stuff that's going on in the community. And I know this tax is coming up for renewal here real soon. And a lot of people feel like they just don't even want to support it unless we modify the resolution because and you know and make it more than just industrial. And change it up to where it can help more than just industrial because we're focusing so much on Big River and, 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 and Nucor, but a lot of people don't want to work there. A lot of people just don't want to work at the steel industry. Okay, I must stay paying. Well, so, I will say this. By law, yes, we are restricted mm -hmm. with this tax yes. to industrial projects. Okay. We can't help development. Mm -hmm. I wish we could. I wish the law allowed us to put a million dollars or two million dollars with someone like the Grow America Fund mm -hmm. who has professional lenders yes, and sir. professional collectors because yes, if you're going to start the loan to small business you're going to need some really good collectors yes you know mm -hmm. uh, but the law will not let us do it right. so uh, so we can't help we can't help housing developers we can't help people who want to put in restaurants we can't help people who want to do retail mm -hmm. because it's against the law. It's mm -hmm. against the Constitution. Uh, now, there were uh, some changes made in, in this last uh, session mm -hmm. uh, for companies that would allow some retail, mm -hmm. but nobody knows how those are going to play out yet. Mm -hmm. uh, but when they do, when they do, when, when the lawyers decide how they're going to play out, then I'll present them to the court, and if they want, if we want to go down that road, mm -hmm. the great danger is obvious. Yes. If there's not enough money to support a retail establishment mm -hmm. ongoing, mm -hmm. then why help it get started in the first place? Right. Because you're just setting someone up for failure. Mm -hmm. If you can't support the Taco Bell, mm -hmm. why get them into the business? You're not helping the family, or anybody else. Well, I, I think Taco Bell, Popeyes, Burger King, and Zaxxas, uh, places like that restaurant, they don't need help. They already an organization, they got plenty of money. <coughs> but it's but Jonesboro is not made up of just corporations of that. They got all kind of stuff going on in Jonesboro, all kind of businesses. One guy brought up this, he said, I, if I come to Blau, he said I can generate 40 jobs right off the bat. He said, well here's my issue. He said, the um, the um, um, $9.85 right now is is what they paying people. Mm -hmm. He said next year it's going to go to $10 and something. He said the following year out there it's going to go to $11 and something. He said if I can get some kind of incentive for payroll to help me combat that out of all the people I'm hiring, he said I will be willing to give Blah a chance. But I need help with that because he said of course they're trying to get it at $15 an hour. He said but hopefully he's pushing against that. But he said right now he says at nine dollars or something, it's gonna be next year ten dollars or something. He said the following year. He said so when you got four to fifty employees, that 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 helps. If he said if I can get some payroll, and I'm gonna make sure that Mr. Nelson, you meet with him, and whatever way you can help him, he said he's and he said I'm gonna I'm gonna start out with four to employees right here, and it's a great organization. It's already in Jonesboro, and he's getting ready to expand five other locations. And I was I, I was begging him to give Blaubel a chance, and I think we we can't afford to just sit back. And be like, well, just, you know, blah, Mississippi County. We need to be begging. We need to be on our knees. We need to be knocking on folks' doors and say, hey, give Mississippi County a blah, chain. What do we need to do? And if we need to do some things unconventionally, and whatever we need to do with Senator Wallace or uh, or our other state representatives, he said, whatever we need to do, to, whatever we need to do, we just need to get it done. And because we're not a hot spot right now, we just need to be more aggressive about what we're doing. And all I'm saying is that we just need more aggressive. I understand what you're saying too, Mr. Chitwood, and I know other things restrict you, but what I'm saying is that it's other things too, besides industry, that, that can come to Blauble, that we can find ways to help them come that's going to employ people and help the growth of Blauble. Because when it's all said and done, they're going to look at, if I come to Blauble, am I going to make money? That's in the business. What is the surrounding areas? How many people in Blauble? What is the average income? All that, they want all that presented because that matters when these companies come in. Well, Jonesboro got all that. They present that over there like crazy. Developers, everybody over there doing present that. Do we have that ready for people? Let's see what. If not, we Developers need, need banks. No, no, what I'm saying is do we have for, what I'm saying, developers, 
They are all the ones lobbying for restaurants. They're lobbying for businesses they, because they're all a part of that. So what I'm saying, before they can ask this company to say, let's, I, we got five in Jonesboro, let's put three in Blobble. Well, the first thing, they're going to want to know the same thing about Jonesboro Blobble. How many people? What's the surrounding areas? What's the, uh, uh, what is the average income? What is the taxes over there? We've got all that. Yeah. So All that's available today. Right. Well, He's got all that in his office. Well, well we need to have that out. And say, and to more, what I'm saying, we need to have more than just, what I'm saying, you can't reach everybody, but you, well, everybody's not going to approach you unless they, somebody just bring them to you. So what I'm saying is that, all I'm saying, you need help. I mean, you can't do it by yourself. You're one man paroling through this county, you can't do it by yourself. And if, you, if, if anybody thinks you can do it by yourself, then they're they not being truthful. And all I'm saying is that, let's get you some help. Let's, get, let's, let's put a, let, with Judge Nelson, everybody, put a task force together to help you with people that can say, okay, let, what about this, Mr. Chitwood? What about this? How, what do we need to do to get this? And put these people in the room with the people that like yourself and Judge Nelson and, 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 and Meryl Sanders or whoever else to say, hey, let's do this. What do we need to do to get it done? You see, because that's the only way we're going to move forward. I mean, I, I mean, I, like I said, I don't want to talk about the history and what happened last year and beyond. We all know that. Bill Nelson, he's been around a long time. He can, I know he can, he know a lot of all this. He's saying he's old. <laughs> <laughs> we talking. He shared a lot of stories with me. You know. So, and uh, I'm just saying how we can move forward. And, and, there's and, a there's a couple more people that I would like to see if they want to make okay. some comments. Okay. Are you finished? Okay. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Shimwell, you were mentioned in his oration. Would you like to make any comments? Sure, I'll make a few comments. I appreciate the chance to be here. Come closer. We got microphones on the table. Oh, okay. All right. Well, we want you on record, Doc. Good. Well, I, that's where I'm used to being, so let's just get over there. I appreciate Dr. Kim being here. I appreciate so many of the things that Mr. Prude said. We can have visited before, and I appreciate the compliments that you gave us. Yes. Gosh, a lot of things on the table there that could be addressed, and I've tried to think, well, let me narrow it down to the most important things. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about three things for a few minutes, and then I'm going to ask with the, with, with Mr. Nelson's permission, Michael Smith, to share some information and statistics with you about the work program specifically, because he's the work coordinator. Let's say first, I want to reiterate what Mr. Chitwood said about how we're investing so many. When I say we, I'm not talking from my, my capacity at the college, but as a member of the Great River Economic Development Foundation, how we're investing uh, with the Quorum Court's permission, the, the incentives from the sales tax. What Mr. Chitwood talked about is there is no more direct way. When we're taking the sales tax dollars that we collect and it goes into, it pays a person's paycheck. There's no more direct way to put that into a county's member's uh, uh, citizen's pocket. And we're doing that for people, yes, that work, that are from Mississippi County, but really where we're targeting that is for people that are going through the work program. You know, the most at-risk population that we have in the county. Those are the pockets that we're trying to put this sales tax investment into. And I don't think that can be emphasized enough. Uh, the folks in this county that, that want opportunity, that maybe are in poverty right now, they need to understand that's what we're trying to do with the sales tax money. They're the primary folks in this county that ought to be wanting this sales tax done because they're designed to be the primary beneficiary. I'd say, too, on that line as well, that in terms of these incentives, I want to speak to the students coming out of high school and the students at risk, but I want to say this, too, in my capacity on the Economic Development Foundation, that we, we, we talk a lot about Big River Steel and the jobs there and the jobs at Newcore, as we should, because these are, our, from a pay standpoint, which you would consider our top shelf jobs. What we don't maybe talk about enough that we should talk about more are those next level, good paying, 20, 20, 25, 30 dollar an hour jobs that are on the next level, the satellites that support those companies. And we have more of those jobs, frankly, than we do people at Newcore and Big River Steel. And I mention that because, just from a, a realistic standpoint, if a, a young person is coming out of high school with zero work experience, 
it's absolutely unrealistic to think that person with zero work experience is going to apply for a seventy-five hundred thousand dollar job at Big River Steel and get it when they've got a whole line of people that do have good work experience that want those jobs. That's not even one being ignored. That's just economics. You're going to hire the employees that are the best employees you can get. But where the opportunity comes in are in these next range jobs, the next shelf jobs. That's where people who don't have the same kind of work experience are likely to get their first opportunity because that's reality. Is, is anything in life you pretty much have to work for. And so your entry level job is not going to be more than likely a top shelf job at, at Newport Big River Steel. That's not realistic. You're going to start somewhere to gain experience and then compete with similar people for those jobs. Second thing I would talk about as well uh, are some of the things that uh, some of the things that we're doing at the college. <clears throat> First thing we do to try to reach people in our, in our community, in Blytheville and all of Mississippi County, but let's be honest, most of our resources are going to Blytheville. First thing we do is we send a success navigator, Willie Williams, who many of you have met, into our community. Beauty shops, barber shops, walking up and down neighborhoods, to try to make people aware of the opportunity that's available, not just at the college, but jobs that are out there that you can prepare for and get. So number one, we're trying to get that word out in a very grassroots way. Number two, maybe you've seen one of our buses, opportunity bus, that people can get a ride, come to college, come to get training. It costs them zero. All they have to do is see their advisor each week and have a determination that you're making good progress, then you get a bus pass for the next week. So we're trying to get the word out. We're trying to provide opportunity for people to come. Some of the other things I mentioned, if they're a single parent with children, well, we can get them, we can get them child care vouchers. Have somebody watch your kids while they come. We can get them a gas voucher. If they've got a car and they need a bus ride, I just need gasoline money to come. Come see us about that. We can take care of that. When they get there, then this success navigator is going to, to take them around to the different services they need. And one of the things they're likely to do is assign that person a volunteer community mentor. And I'm glad to see Mr. Gillespie here because he does that for our male mentors. And I believe we have over 100 male and female mentors. Dr. Robin Green is in charge of our female mentoring program. And so someone is assigned to that person. Okay, so we've gotten the word out. We've gotten you a way to get here. There are opportunities there to have somebody watch your kids. There's an opportunity if you've got a car and need gas to get gas money to get here. We've got somebody that's going to encourage you, is going to mentor you, and help get you through this. And so, I mean, I very much respect what, what you're saying, Mr. Prude, but... I think the opportunity for people to access jobs is excellent. Now, I, I asked Mr. Smith, is my number three thing, to talk about the work program, some of the statistics, to tell you about some of the people we serve, what his experience has been actually working with the folks in the work program in terms of getting them uh, employed and the response he gets from employers. So, and I might, uh, how do they say it in court, I, I, I might want to come back with a rebuttal later, so I, I don't completely yield the floor or reserve that. <laughs> but I'm going to ask Mr. Smith to speak about the work program as we see. Mr. Smith, we recognize you for about three minutes. So, uh, <laughs> I, 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 I have five years. I probably. promise you I'll give about two minutes back to you. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely won't be that long. Um, speaking on the work program, uh, Mr. Prude said something earlier about the program on these people when they come through the program they're guaranteed a job. That's not something in my speech. We don't guarantee anything. What we will do is prepare you to be employable for the companies, but we do not guarantee you anything. We will guarantee you some training um, and we will guarantee you that I will reach out to people for you but I cannot make anyone 
hire that individual. Through this work program, we had a total of 688 people, applicants, that have applied for the program, tried to get into the program. Uh, that's not including the people that I've spoken to that has not come to the actual college to sign up for the program or wanted to get into the program. I just, I talked to them and from that point on, they didn't actually respond. But 688 actually um, said that they wanted to come to the program. By the time I got ready to do my orientation days, um, not with all these people because I've only been here since class 23, which is like two years. Uh, class 20, which involves Solomon, I'm going to reach out to him uh, to find out why it is that he does not have employment because that's through another program and I wasn't here at that time, so I will reach out to him. Uh, but there are a lot of individuals that, uh, 157 of them, that no longer has the same telephone number or for whatever reason, but ANC has the same telephone number. So those 40 individuals that contacted you and said that we have not been contacted or no one's talked to us about the program or no one's called us, tell them to call ANC and ask for Michael Smith. Um, our number has not changed. 343 people actually completed the program. Oh, uh, up, to this, up to this point, that's including my last cohort that I just finished. Um, another number I wanted to throw out to you guys. Oh. Total program, 395, I'm sorry, 395 people. Uh, oh, wait, total program, 390, 343 actually completed the program. 164 of those 343 are actually working at this time. African Americans in this program, 257. Um, white, Caucasian, 88. Um, Hispanics, 47, and three, four other. So we are reaching out to all the individuals, the, the companies that are contacting us. We're sending individuals. What happens is once they complete this program, I, I recommend those individuals that I think are capable of going to the next phase or the next stage. I recommend those people to Courtney Cooper. Courtney Cooper sends out a mass email whenever, many of you know Courtney Cooper, whenever jobs come in to her, then she sends out mass emails on these people are hired, these people are hired, these people are hired. The other, last week at ASP, I took about 17 people down to uh, Arkansas Steel Processing to do job interviews. We, they were in a table setting just as, just such as what you guys are sitting in now. They sat at this table and from that point, ASP has contacted me and said that three of those 17, we want to interview again for the program. So I went with the hopes of 17 being hired, three of them are going to return. There again, that's out of my control, but I will try to get those three employed. Also, I sent out a mass email this morning to about Comfort Inn. Um, Thomas, Thomas Steele, I think it, I'm, I'm in Industries or something at, at, at Comfort Inn, they were doing a job uh, fair as well. So the, the word is getting out to these individuals that, that, that job and opportunities are there. On the other hand, like I said, stated before, we can't make individuals hire everyone. We want them to be employed, but it's just not <laughs> it's just not realistic that they're going to hire everyone. And I and I and I echo what um, Dr. Shimwell said. They're going to take the most qualified, the most qualified individuals. So we push once you do this program, we push for you to continue your education, go out and and seek more trades or, or get more training so that they can tell you that you are qualified for that job. A person that's been at, 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 at Newport Yamato for 17 years want to go out to Big River Steel, of course they're going to try to hire that person that's been 17 years if he applies as opposed to that person that just came through the work program and have no experience at all. So I would just say um, have those people con contact me, and if the steel mill is not for them, I'll call Dollar General for them to see whether or not we can get employed. Tanya Dollar can tell you, I called her this morning about a person. So if anyone has any more questions for me, you can ask me at the end. Um, I hope I've answered everything. I was not prepared for this. I'm, I'm so sorry. I was not prepared for this. I just found out through Tamika 
uh, yesterday, I think it was, and I talked to Mr. Pruitt, and, and he did not get back with me on, on what is going on. But, uh, thank you, Mr. Smith. We appreciate you coming. Thank you. Well, can I speak on the experience part you're saying? On the experience that you're saying, and like I said, I just hadn't, I just, I'm not saying ANC ain't doing what y'all need to do. That's not what I'm, but you got to understand the experience part. If Big River and Nuco was going on experience, I'm telling you from managers and people that work there, if they was going on experience, they said they would never hire anyone. So it's not that you need the experience, because they are saying, we will train you. But, the, but we're hearing we can't pass a drug test. They're not passing drug tests. They're saying that's not true about me. I haven't gotten a call. Some of these people saying they don't want to go to Steel Mill, Machine Will. Some of these people saying I go to Tenaris. I go wherever. Everybody's not shooting for Big River. So my, what I'm saying to you is that I understand everything you're saying to Mike, and I know, you know, y'all, what I'm saying to you is it's a gap that we need to figure out a way to, because there's a gap of people that's being ignored and not getting a chance to work. Because everybody don't want 12 hour shift. Everybody want four days on four. They don't want that. And you have to understand this too. Everybody's not going to come through ANC to get a job. I understand that. So, but I know ANC is pulling, but you can't expect everyone to say, well, come through ANC, we're going to get a job over here. Now, I know that I know that y'all, Mike, you said, I never said you guaranteed to get a job. Well, that's what was being told to them. That means why they was enrolling. Because they were saying, you go through this program, you guarantee the job be real or they I, I go. So so even though you weren't saying it and you just been there a year, this been going on way for you. It's and been no, going no, on for no, BB no, got no, there. No, no, no you know. works at ANC that right. said that. I challenge anybody to right. produce anyone right. that works at ANC that's right. ever said that. Right. I can't control and I don't mean to sound combative here, because right. I don't want to be. Right. I can't control what rumors and gossip that right. are false gets made up and gets repeated. Right. As Mr. Smith said. We're about a lot more than the steel companies. Right. You know, he's, he's rattled, I heard him rattle off Dollar General in a, a hotel mm -hmm. uh, uh, operation. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll, we'll try to connect people with anywhere that they want to work. Mm -hmm. uh, and I understand everybody's not going to go through AMC, but I find it a little bit hard to believe, just as a citizen of the county, talking to all the employers that I do, mm -hmm. who are desperately looking for work, I find it hard to believe. I won't say it's not true, but I find it very challenging to believe mm -hmm. that employers that are desperately looking for work mm -hmm. are turning away workers. I had a conversation recently with Justice uh, Justice Jackson about trying. Are, are you turning away quality workers I'm not out of the hotel? Work. No. <laughs> that I just I agree with you. There's a gap. And I'm open to any idea about how we close that gap. But again, I I relate what we're doing at AMC to try to make people aware of these opportunities to connect them. And I'm open to any idea to further that. But it's like they were saying, in some cases, you can't lead a horse to water. Right. It's not right. just about making employers hire people. Right. Sometimes you can't lead a horse to water. Right. And so uh, I'd say, show me the employer that's turning away qualified workers. Uh, in, in, in We're running. Like um, I just have a hard time believing that's occurring. Thank you for the extra time, Justice Nelson. I was, you were done. You just didn't know it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't ever have to wonder about it. <laughs> Judge, is there anything that you would like to add to this? If not, I'm going to adjourn the meeting. The meeting's adjourned. <laughs> Back part of the Hey, where's that second truck, folks? Let me tell me. I work Okay, Lindsay's just asking. I'm definitely happy. Thank you. They're going to put it there. I appreciate you. I'll be good with some stuff. I'll be good with some stuff. I'll be good with some stuff. That's what it's all about. 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 Perry told me he was trying to get yeah, one one or two trucks on us after I think I do after it. lunch. So has anything showed up since I was gone? All right, I'll call Perry. I'll be back in just a few minutes. Yeah, uh, I'll call Perry and see. But he told me this morning he was trying to get something to us. All right, thanks.
Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. I don't know anybody that ever says they like work. But they do it for the money. How are you, sir? Wonderful. Hey, so if it's not there, it's almost there, and that's not a joke. Okay. All righty. Well, I thought he had already had time to get there. I'm, I've been in a, in a court meeting. And, uh, Put three truck planes on me and get this damn thing done. Oh, that just went on recording. <laughs> I really think we ought to get three for this man here. <laughs> Have you ever heard anybody say, I really do like working in steel? Uh -huh. Have you ever yeah, whatever. <laughs> but although they feel well, they've been sitting there, Jerry was sitting there at 12 a while ago. Uh -huh. Because they like getting up at 4 o'clock in the morning and being there. Well, it, you've got it all now. That's, that's 662,000 pounds. 622,000 pounds. <laughs> he probably, she probably okay. enjoys it. Okay. Thanks. Bye. How are you doing? I've never talked to anybody that did it. I've never talked to anybody that did it. Honest to God, I have never talked to anybody that did it. I've said, I really, really enjoy working out there. It's a lot of fun. Excuse me. Excuse me.